Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Ring the siren. Unpopular Harry Styles opinion alert coming from me. You might be thinking, Ben, why are you even going to go in that territory? Why are you even going to say something negative about Harry Styles? Do you want a drone strike at your house? Um, It needs to be said. I think Harry Styles might be a little bit overrated. Let, let's unpack that. Let's go in with an open mind. Okay, this is coming from someone who was a massive Harry Styles fan, um, especially in the past two years. I think what he did, did in the past two years was very good, but I wasn't a fan of his recent album. And I'm bringing this up now because the Grammys happened last Sunday, okay? The Grammys, a celebration of music, or also the place where everyone argues about what the best song, artist, album was, and fights to the death about it, when it's literally just songs. And it's never that deep. We'll we'll get into more Grammy stuff in a little bit, but I, I want to start this by talking about some weirdness that I've noticed with Harry Styles, his music, and his fandom. Okay, so he Harry Styles came from One Direction. Duh! Like I don't. I'm not gonna give you the whole fucking nine yards about what Harry Styles born in Shepherdshire, England, nineteen. 19- 90s like we're not doing that you you can probably figure it out but it's it, it is c- crazy to see like an artist who went from a boy band which is like usually kind of like junk food music not say not saying that one direction is junk food music don't come for me on that but like very pop mainstream music to get one of the most prestigious awards in music which is album of the year that doesn't happen that often when someone goes from like super commercial music to very critically acclaimed music, which was his album, Harry's House, which won album of the year at the Grammys. This surprised me like a lot. I listened, I, I listened to part of the album, couldn't make it through the whole thing because I literally got bored. I didn't really like the album and that's just my personal opinion but why I think he's overrated is for other reasons. So, I'm so scared. Like, I know there's some crazy Harrys out there with, like, rifles, like, cocked and ready to find my address. Um, His album, in comparison to the other albums that were nominated, let me read them all to you real quick. Uh, the, the albums nominated for album of the year, it was Harry's house, but Harry's house, uh, voyage by ABBA. I like, okay. 30 by Adele. I mean, it's Adele. It's a, a, a strong contender. Un verano sin ti by bad bunny. A lot of people love that. I only listened to a little bit. Renaissance by Beyonce. Wasn't my favorite, but seemed like the album of the freaking year for a lot of people. Good morning. Gorgeous by Mary J. Blige. Didn't listen to it. In these days by Brand, in these silent days by Brandy Carlisle. Don't know who that is. Didn't listen to it. Music of the Spears by Coldplay. Didn't even know they existed anymore. Special by Lizzo. I'm sure that's good. And Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, my personal favorite. We'll get into that in a little bit. Those are strong contenders, and these are from artists like Mary J. Blige, Beyonce, Adele, who have like years and years and years like perfecting their craft making like these spectacular spectacular albums and not saying that just because you're a newcomer like means you can't have an amazing album that's not necessarily true but i think that might be true in this case because if someone dying like literally right outside every podcast at least four ambulances go by and they are so loud and i'm so sorry so (laughs) You look at Renaissance, um, which was, an you know, the other albums nominated for Album of the Year, I think, have, like, really strong messages or at least had a very big, like, cultural moment um, attached to them. Like, Beyonce's Renaissance was very much about – it was, like, like a post-COVID party album and also the, the return of Beyonce after, like, so many years. That's uh, something to celebrate in itself. Um, 
you have 30 by adele which you know th- that and lizzo's album the white moms were gonna eat up because that's just very much like white mom like who just got divorced energy um and they need like music that speaks to their soul like that that would do it for them mr morale and the big steppers by kendrick lamar a masterful album that covers so many like topics that haven't even been touched by hip-hop like truly my personal album of the decade amazing and then you have harry's house (laughs) which is just kind of like him dancing around in like like a multicolor onesie making music that sounds like it belongs in a fucking target commercial (laughs) i'm so sorry that's just how i feel and I, 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 I was reluctant, like, talking about this because I don't want to dog on people that, like, think that this was their favorite album of the year. Because it he is for a lot of people. Ha- Harry Styles has, like, almost BTS-level fans. Um, and I'm not saying that just because I think it's not good or I think it shouldn't have won album of the year, like, should affect your listening experience at all. It, music truly at the end of the day is just subjective duh there's no one person that's like what the, that's why i think the like the grammys is a little stupid because yes like from a critic standpoint you can declare an album being good or bad but overall does that really matter not really like what matters is kind of the overall effect it has on the listeners the, the fans like there there truly is such a difference between critic like the the most popular music to critics and the most popular music to the masses and that's easy to tell from like who wins the grammys versus who has the highest like spotify streams so you, i think the role of critics um and the grammys is kind of to show like more by the books excellence i guess it's not a popularity contest basically I think that's what a lot of people kind of confuse the Grammys for. It really doesn't matter how popular the artist is. It matters, like, the sonic quality of the song. And that can be very, um, very, it's very prominent if you look at the song of the year winner, okay? So we have, like, A, B, C, D, E, F, U by Gale. Thank God that did not win. Oh, my God. About Damn Time by Lizzo, All Too Well, uh, the 10-minute version by Taylor Swift, As It Was by Harry Styles, Bad Habit by Steve Lacey, Break My Soul by Beyonce, Easy On Me by Adele, God Did by DJ Khaled, The Heart Part 5 by Kendrick Lamar, but the winner wasn't any of those. It was Just Like That by Bonnie Raitt. I had no clue who that was. I had to go look them up on Spotify, and that song wasn't even in the top five of their most streamed songs and i've I've never even heard of this girl and does that matter no because the grammys are not a popularity contest i listened to the song right before filming this and it was pretty good it's not my cup of tea but i can see like it, it, it it's it's got qualities that i can see why critics would like it but obviously that's not gonna freaking outsell like as it was by Harry Styles. So, you know, you see people on Twitter get, like, mad about that kind of thing. Like, well, BTS paved the way and is the most popular artist. But it's like that doesn't matter because to the Grammys, that matters to, duh, most people. But to the Grammys, it doesn't matter. So there's a lot of, like, weight placed on these award shows. But... I don't know. I think there's an argument to be made if that's, like, valid or even needed. But anyways, I just wanted to quickly have that rant about Harry Styles. I want to get into the rest of um, the awards because there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, thank God ABCDFU did not win anything. Very glad about that. Very, very glad about that. Um, So I talked about Song of the Year, Album of the Year. There's Record of the Year. I still don't understand what the difference is between Song of the Year and Record of the Year. I like to me those are the same thing. I really don't understand what the difference is at all. And there's different winners and different nominees. So like um the winner of record of the year was about damn time. Like I'm not mad at that. 
I think I I think Lizzo's insanely talented. I don't really like her music, but um, I personally think Bad Habit should have won. Steve Lacey is incredible. Motherfucker can just pick up a guitar and like literally make magic. So I think he should have won Record of the Year. Um, maybe tied with that is the Heart Part Five, but that eh. I which by the way I love that song, but uh, and even Woman by Doja Cat was very. You know, honestly, like, that's the thing. It's it's hard to tell because I, I look at all these other songs. I'm like, wow, these were all really good. Um, Break My Soul, a, ve- a very good summer post-COVID anthem. But I, I can see why Lizzo won that one. Let's continue, though. Best New Artist. The nominees are. <laughs> I feel like I'm literally like a announcer. The nominees are. Samara Joy, Anita, Omar Apollo, Domi, and J.D. Beck. Lato, Maniskin, uh, Looney Long, Toby Nwinge, I think I said that wrong, I'm so sorry, Molly Tuttle, and Wet Leg. The winner was Samara Joy. Once again, had no clue who that was. Had to look him up. The music's good. Um, I think it personally should have been uh, Maniskin, and I don't even like them. I've listened to three songs, but I think they're just really good performers, and I just see people like listen to their music once and go absolutely insane. Um, I think they're very cool. Now, moving on, uh, best pop vocal album. The the nominees are Harry's House, Voyage, uh, by ABBA, Thirty by Adele, Music of the Spheres by Coldplay, Special by Lizzo. The winner was Harry's House. You, you, I, I see that makes sense to me because like that was a very much pop album. Um, and when it was when Harry's House was put against all the albums, was not album of the year for me. But I can see it being pop album that or Thirty by Adele. Okay, <laughs> next, uh, best pop duo slash group performance. The nominees are Sam Smith and Kim Petras for Unholy. Don't Shut Me Down by ABBA. Bam Bam by Camila Cabello featuring Ed Sheeran. <laughs> My Universe by Coldplay and BTS. And I Like You, a happier song by Post Malone and Doja Cat. I've listened to only... No, I've listened to none of these, actually. <laughs> uh, I've been forced to listen to Bits of Unholy just from, like, TikTok and, like, being stuck in a fucking, like coals and like that's playing on the radio and i think it's maybe one of the most horrendous songs ever i really i really hate it um i really don't like it at all but uh you know i don't i haven't listened to any other any of these other ones which is really strange because like well first of all okay i we can do process of elimination here i don't like coldplay Camila Cabello featuring Ed Sheeran. I'd rather have explosives put in my ears and then fucking detonated. Um, I Like You, A Happier Song by Post Malone and Doja Cat. I can see myself like. <laughs> but we're going to move on from that because I, I don't know. Best pop solo performance. Uh, we have Adele for Easy On Me. Moscow Mule by Bad Bunny. Uh, Woman by Doja Cat, Bad Habit by Steve Lacey, About Damn Time by Lizzo, and As It Was by Harry Styles. The winner was Easy On Me by Adele. I think that's valid. Um, it You know, she hadn't released a song in so long, and I think a lot of people were kind of wondering, like, what is she going to come back with? Is it going to be good? Uh, and it lived up to the expectations. It was like an incredible... Incredible vocals from her as always. A beautiful post divorce album or song. I liked it. Um, once again, I think Bad Habit by Steve Lacey should have won. Like, that's an incredible song, like truly incredible. But anyways, moving on. Best dance slash electronic music album. The nominees are Renaissance by Beyonce, Fragments by Bonobo, Diplo by Diplo. <laughs> The Last Goodbye by Odessa and Surrender by Rufus Dussault. Um, I guess I didn't even really see Renaissance as like a... I guess it's a dance album, not so much electronic, but that 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 checks out to me. That's who I would say is the winner, even though I didn't really like the album. I just don't want Diplo, like Diplo, to ever win a Grammy. I think that hurt me. So glad that won. 
Um, moving on, best dance slash electronic recording. Uh, there's Break My Soul by Beyonce, Rosewood by Bonobo, Don't Forget My Love by Diplo and Miguel, uh, I'm Good by David Guetta and Baby Rax. No! <laughs> no! Intimidated by Kate Trinata featuring her On My Knees by Rufus Dussault. The winner was Break My Soul by Beyonce. Yup. It was good. It was a good little... Like, it makes you get up. It makes you want to shake, like, every molecule of fat in your ass. Like, it's good. It's it's a good one. Best rock... I'm just going to skip that. I don't know a single fucking thing about that. Best rock album. We're skipping that, too. Um, Machine Gun Kelly was nominated absolutely not that's horrific um okay best alternative music album uh we have wet leg by wet leg we by arcade fire dragon new war mountain i believe in you by big thief fossora by bjork and cool it down by yeah yeah yes this one went to wet leg hadn't really heard much about them um, and just so you guys know, like, the two main genres I listen to are rap music and alternative. Um, I don't really dabble that much in other genres, uh, especially, like, pop. I'm not, I really do not listen to that much of. Um, but I listen to Fosora by Bjork and uh, Dragon New War Mountain, I Believe Me by Big Thief. Really liked that album. I think that really may have been... A snub. What do they call it? A snub? I think you should have won. Fosora by Bjork. It was good. It was a good Bjork album, but I think it was kind of just a little too experimental, I guess. It it, it really felt like just kind of like a lot of bloops and bleeps. Um, a lot of people would make jokes being like, we have like reached like the end of music when they played like songs off that album because it very much is just like... It, it, it's weird because, like, when you listen to it and you're like, okay, this is a Bjork album, you can, like, think to yourself, okay, it's good. But sometimes I'm like, if this was just put out by someone else, I think I might turn it off immediately. And then I start thinking, like, is this really a good album? But I don't know. I, I still liked it, though. Uh, best R&B song, Cuff It by Beyonce, Good Morning Gorgeous by Mary J. Blige, Hers and Hers by Hamadi Abi. Hurt Me So Good by Akeel Henry and Please Don't Walk Away by PJ Morton. The winner was Cuff It by Beyonce. Yeah, that checks out for me. Um, don't have much to say beyond that. Best Rap Performance. Um, we have The Heart Part 5 by Kendrick Lamar. God Did by DJ Khaled. Vegas by Doja Cat. Push and P by Gunna and Future featuring Young Thug. And FNF Let's Go by Hit Kid and Glorilla. This one was very confusing to me because the Heart Part Five, um, I I think was a good song off of his album, but I do don't, don't think that is the song off of the Big Steppers that should have been like in the runnings. I think maybe like Father Time or even like N95 should have been like the contender for best rap performance, but. I am glad that the Heart Part 5 did win that one. Very glad that uh, God Did by DJ Khaled didn't win a fucking Grammy, thank God. Vegas by Doja Cat, nah, uh, I'm glad it didn't win. I think, like, uh, I think, I think songs made for movies, like, in general, just aren't that good, but I especially didn't like that song at all um if you know it was made for elvis um pushing p by gunna and future it it created a fun moment was it the best rap performance of 2022 no uh and fnf let's go i don't think i've heard that but i'm gonna check it out then best rap song those are two different awards strange again um i'm guessing like the performance award is like vocal performance i'm guessing and best rap songs just overall but once again the heart part five won um very glad about that the the other nominees were churchill downs by drake god did by dj khaled push and p uh and wait for you um yeah the heart part five yeah 
not much to say beyond that. Best rap album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Yup. It checks out very much. Um, you know, it's my personal album of the year, but we can't have that now, can we? So I'll take it. Uh, the other nominees were God Did by DJ Khaled, I Never Liked You by Future, Come Home, The Kids Miss You by Jack Harlow, and It's Almost Dry by Pusha T. I saw a lot of people on like hip-hop Twitter upset that It's Almost Dry by Pusha T didn't win. Uh, I haven't given it a full listen, but it has some good stuff in there. Jack Harlow being nominated is like insane. That has to be like some sort of like industry push or something because that album was like across the board fucking slammed for being bad. Um, I think it was pretty terrible. God did by DJ Khaled. Nope. I never liked you by Futures like all right, but I just I can't I can't see it being the best rap album when you are literally competing against Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. So best country performer we're skipping best country song we are skipping best country album we are skipping um best jazz album jazz instrumental see then it gets into territory that like like what the fuck is best spoken word poetry album <laughs> best soundtrack for video games once assassin's creed valhalla lit that best song written for visual media media oh this is a good one okay um best song written for visual media we don't talk about Bruno from Encanto, Be Alive from King Richard by Beyonce, uh, Carolina from Where the Crawdags Sing by Taylor Swift, uh, Hold My Hand by Lady Gaga for Top Gun Maverick, uh, Keep Rising from The Woman King, and Nobody Like You from Turning Red by Billie Eilish. I didn't even know she made a song for Turning Red. Uh, we don't talk about Bruno was good. I think that that makes sense. Um, I think Be Alive by Beyonce was also very good, but I think we I think it's best to stay away from giving awards to stuff that involves Will Smith for the safety of everyone. Um and then the Lady Gaga song for Top Gun Maverick, I actually fucking hated. It was so bad and made no sense. <laughs> like the music video was her like crawling over like a, like a B fifty five bomber plane. It's so silly. Uh didn't really like it. Um, but I like who won best, uh, like, like they have the randomest, randomest gram, like best boxed or special limited edition package. Why the fuck does that matter? Like who cares? <laughs> it's so funny. Anyways. Uh, and then finally best comedy album, the closer by Dave Chappelle, uh, comedy monster by Jim Gaffigan, a little brains, a little talent by Randy Rambo. Sorry by Louis C.K. and We All Scream by Patton Oswalt. This is such a weird category to me too because yes, it's like can be only audio, but it's like who is listening to comedy specials just in the audio format? Like if there's like a Netflix special such as The Closer by Dave Chappelle, you're gonna watch it on Netflix. You're not just gonna like sit in the darkness of your room and like listen to him. Like th that is just so foreign to me, but you know, to each their own. Um. Out of all those, I only watched The Closer by Dave Chappelle. Uh, disagree with a lot of shit that man says. Holy fuck. Um, but I think overall, like, that checks out. And that is all of the nominations. Um, it's, it's, it's been a year for music. And I really do think, like, I think, like, the, like peak pop music was, like, maybe 10 years ago, which is, like, so, like, ugh, like old head of me to say. I feel, like, literally 800 years old. I'm like, ugh, 10 years ago, you should have seen. I mean, but, like, genuinely, like, what the fuck do we have now? Like, yeah, like th that's why award shows are, like, kind of boring to me now because, like, there's no drip anymore. Like, Lady Gaga used to cover herself in meat and perform and pretend to be shot. Um... You know, Nicki Minaj was, like, stepping the bar up. And now it's, like, where are they? Now we have, like, the same performance of people just getting on stage, doing a little dance, and getting off. Like, there's no drip anymore, and it makes me kind of sad. Um, also, when I watched the Grammys, uh, my internet kept cutting out. So it was, like, literally I was watching it with, like, four pixels on the screen. So I could barely see what was happening. But I do think that uh, Steve Lacey was absolutely fucking snubbed. He should have won a lot more uh a lot more awards he's like actually incredible i think we're gonna look back when he's like an actual superstar uh and be like wow like he should really should have won in 2023 but he didn't and i'll we'll move on from that um 
and I know I like kind of shit on like award shows, but I do truly at the end of the day just enjoy them. Because if we didn't have them, it'd be a little bit dull. Like we need a moment to kind of like reconvene every year and be like, oh my god, Kate, like what was the best music? Like what really stood out? Because if we didn't have that, we would just have like the monotonous Spotify charts be like the same fucking Ed Sheeran, Bad Bunny, and like Doja Cat songs in rotation and that's like what we would think is the best of the best for music so alas uh, like we'll wrap it up by saying uh i think a lot of awards should have gone to other people but to each their fucking own i'm just a random ass dude i don't know that much about music but i don't think i've ever mentioned this on here i use on my channel on ben of the week I used to do every Thursday music reviews. I think I did it for about a year. Um, And I really enjoyed them. Like, I would review, like, mostly rap and pop albums. But it's, like, every Thursday night, I would, like, stay up late, record a music review, and then, like, post it as soon as I could. And uh, I, I do enjoy critiquing music. It is a little pastime. I love being a critic and just having absolutely no reason to critique music, but doing it anyways, it's very fun to me. And I want to do this for the Oscars because, uh, you know, I do, I enjoy music, but I am becoming like a disgusting little film bro. Um, and I'm trying to watch every single movie nominated for an Oscar this year. I've got about 60% of them watched. I have a lot more to go. Um, but I, I want to, like, keep because, like, this, there's a lot of music that I haven't seen. But for the Oscars, I my goal is to have seen every single thing that was nominated so I can give, like, an accurate opinion on every single movie that won or didn't win. So look forward to that. It's in uh, March, I think. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I love the Oscars. And I know it's, like, a lot less popular than, like, the Grammys. And it's, like, decreasing in popularity each year. But I'm going to keep it alive by making the um, Drama Mama official Oscar after party in March. When the Oscars happen. I can't remember the exact date. Um, But with that all being said, uh, I hope you all are doing well. Um, (laughs) YouTube has been a little crazy for me. Thank you for blowing up Jester's Privilege, my documentary on YouTube. Um... The response to that has been actually incredible, and I'm still wrapping my head around it, and it does not feel real, so I'm still processing that. Thank you for all the kind words. All, like, freaking 40,000 comments on YouTube. I, I, I read as many as I can, but, it, y'all, it's, like, 40,000. I've, I've never gotten 40,000 comments on anything. So, um, thank you for being patient, um, and I'll see y'all next Wednesday. Make sure you rate this podcast five stars on Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you enjoyed it. Have a good rest of your week. Also, also let me know um, what you who you thought should have won in the comments because I know a lot of the comments are going to be people like being like your IP address is three four point five eight nine nine as soon as I say something about Harry Styles. So uh, let me know who your album of the year was and who your song of the year was and artist of the year. And with that being said, I'll see y'all later. Take care. Love you a whole bunch. Bye!